This NFL MVP odds and DFS Week Ten lineups edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona for boosted parlays. The in-game odds on every major sport. WinBet has what you need to win. Sign today to receive a one thousand dollar risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Better Fantasy. Better Fantasy is a new free to play app that lets you sync your fantasy football league and bet on the head to head matchups. Download the app today or just head to betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. That's betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out the new propswap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. We're also brought to you by prize picks. Prize picks is DFS simplified. Head over to prizepicks.com and use promo code SGP for a 100% deposit match up to $100. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app. Your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, Sean, the heater continues. Uh, we're cross sporting it. We got college basketball going oh, on. Yes. We got NFL. We got college football action uh, as we record this tonight. But Tuesday, oh, Wednesday no. night. Uh, you know, they say the, the sports cornucopia happens when baseball and hot NBA, blah, 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 the college sports overlapping. That's when shit gets real. God's eye is working overtime this week. Yeah. I mean the Colby, the Colby uh, basketball boner is just, I mean, it is crazy. He's just walking around going, you built a beautiful thing guys. You built it's beautiful. Just want to say it's we're beautiful. Do, we're doing sports. I, I will say it was no, it, it's awesome. I mean, it's crazy now. We had been stretching for what to, you know, what to train God's eye on during the day, no. the slower sports period. But now it's a, a noon tip on the West Coast, and we're live. Uh, Kramer went crazy on the first half unders, and of course, uh, remembering our epic run of uh, DJ Madness and March Madness. Uh, yeah, I mean, I placed seventy first half unders this morning. How was your Tuesday? <laughs> uh, I mean, again, I don't know how else to describe. I, I live this shit. All right. Yes. I this is this not shit. a joke. A lot of other people under this table. I'm wearing socks with <laughs> shoes and jeans. All right. And a t-shirt. True. 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 Every man over here. I, I, well, if you don't know, Ryan is referring of course to some of the NFL network and their uh, high water pants and press shirts and, and kind of like dressed up. Look, just, you are wearing. Yeah, I like how you led, uh, or you you kept pants last there. That was wow. that, when you said I'm wearing shirts <laughs> or shoes and socks underneath here. Uh, may have wow. surprised some of the listeners. All right, we got a great uh, podcast for you. We're gonna break down NFL MVP odds. That race is uh, getting pretty crazy. We're gonna get to that, and of course, hit you with our DFS Week Ten lineups as well. But before we get to that. It's time for this week's installment of Real Men of Degens, brought to you by PropSwap.com. Head over to PropSwap.com. Use our promo code SGP to buy and sell real sports bets and get that sweet, sweet, sweet deposit bonus. SGPN presents Real Men of Degens. Real Men of Degens. We salute you. Bicycle Hotel and Casino? That's right, the Bicycle Hotel and Casino barely turned a blind eye to a Chinese national who made over 100 visits to the Bicycle Hotel and Casino over eight months in 2016, arriving with duffel bags full of cash to bet on marathon sessions of high stakes uh, card games. 
cashing out approximately 100 million during the course of his months long gambling spree prosecutor said uh apparently the bicycle casino forgot to report a lot of this activity they're facing a five hundred thousand dollar fine and uh that's it order to revamp its anti-money laundering protocols so again a lot of people just think the, uh, the one the, in los angeles yes oh, that, that the uh that only the players are the dgens but the casinos are as well and apparently uh the bicycle casino has a bit of a history they were in 1990 the dea agency and irs seized control of the casino after it was determined that it had been constructed in part using laundered drug money and it was later sold to a group of investors so it was built with drug money. Then it was later sold to these investors. And now the, these new investors, it appears are the ones that have gotten in trouble, turning a blind eye to a guy so, just trying to catch a heater. Have I ever told the story about the a guy getting tased at the poker table no. in Los Angeles on, on the podcast at the bicycle casino, <laughs> I'm at the bicycle casino. I'm playing in an, uh, in this, this was probably like a higher stakes limit, but this is almost like pre no limit being huge. And this guy is just freaking out at the table next to me. He's freaking out. This other guy's like rubbing him the wrong way. I don't know what's going on. Next thing you know, the guy disappears for a while. We're in the middle of a hand. Security comes over and tases the dude. He falls out of his chair. Don't and, tase me, and a bro. handgun, like the largest handgun I've ever seen in my life. The size of this laptop. This is like a 16 inch MacBook pro for those not watching <laughs> youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast falls out of this guy's jacket. Jeez. Last time I played cards at the bicycle casino. <laughs> Seems like a wild place. And if you've never been to the card rooms in Los Angeles, if you're thinking uh of you know a super lavish. nice, lavish <laughs> Vegas casino, it is nothing like that. They're kind of uh kind uh, of run down. I actually ran into Norm McDonald back in the day. I think it was the bicycle. Think uh Atlantic City without the beach. <laughs> No boardwalk, no pizza. Put, put it this way: the nicest card room in Los Angeles is by far the Hustler. Yes, which is the, the Larry, Larry Flint, Flint came in and classed up the L.A. card room scene. That's all you need to know. All right, let's get to it. Let's talk a little National Football League. Oh man, can't wait to break down these NFL MVP odds. All the odds we are going to be giving out. Courtesy of the presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast, Win Bet, baby. Bet big, win bigger with Win Bet. Just head over to winnbet.com or download that Win Betting app. Get that $1,000 risk free bet. Are you kidding me? Give you so many winners and also $1,000 risk free sports bet. What? It, it doesn't get any easier. Active in a ton of states. New York, New York is coming. Say uh, congratulations to the Win Bet. They are uh, one of the uh, one of the companies that want a license to operate in the great state of New York. So that is coming. And again, all you gotta do: download that Win Betting app, get those parlay boosts in. Head over to wynnbet.com. Joining us on the line, co hosts of Bet to Win, a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network, Claudia Bellafato. Claudia, thanks for calling in. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. And so uh, let's, well, I mean, first off, we got to talk about your Patriots uh, doing pretty good. My boy McCorkle and the rookie of the year ticket looking, looking pretty <laughs> good. So, although it's, it's interesting, like he's even the game against the Panthers, he didn't look great, but they're still getting the wins. And I feel like as a quarterback, yeah. you're going to get credit. Yeah, I think this is the point in the season. I talked with the the bookmakers about it too, where people are actually starting to respect them. Um, and I don't know if it's because some of the other teams this week was sort of an anomaly for all of the other teams. But yeah. I mean, if you look at this past week, right, it's like I had the Pats, the Chargers, and the Rams in a, a parlay. And it was like the Rams were really the only. I mean, the Patriots were really the only team that were expected to win and did win. So it's sort of like, I think now people, and I don't know if it's because the other teams are doing as well, but people are finally starting to realize that the Patriots do have a chance. And then Mac Jones is good. I mean, he leads all the rookie uh, quarterbacks right now and 
pretty much every stat. So I'm happy. I'm not going to get too excited. I don't want to jinx it. I still kind of stay away from the games. Like I'm staying away from them this week, (laughs) Um, but it's good to see. Yeah. I'm a spoiled fan, so I can't say I'm like not used to them doing well, but that's that's the worst. It's nice to see. Yeah. (laughs) All the places for Mac Jones. Why couldn't he end up in Detroit or some, some God forsaken. He would be destroyed. He 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 needed the pieces around him to be great. It's the worst seeing a good quarterback go to waste. So it really, I'm it, happy for him. Yeah, it really is. And and again, that that's why I kind of thought the the fit made so much sense for them. And and now there's kind of like information leaking out a little bit that maybe Kyle Shanahan did want Mac Jones, but they talked him out of it and and told him to draft Trey Lance. And now I don't know what you make <laughs> of the 49er quarterback situation. Well, now he doesn't even want to play him. He doesn't even know if he should play him. So it's like which there too, I, I don't know about that team. And Joe and I, my co-host on my show, we we've talked about this in depth and with the whole Matt Nagy situation too. It's like, it comes down to, is your team, does your team really have a chance of making the playoffs? And if they do, okay, do you want to get your quarterback started now? Do you want to prep him for next year? If your team doesn't really have a chance, which I don't really know if they do, um, do you want to risk him at this point? It's like, you're not risking him getting hurt. How much more is Jimmy G giving you? Yeah. No, and, I don't know. And, I'm not a coach. I, I don't know, but <laughs> I would like to see him play more. I, I want to see if he lives up to the hype. It would be nice so, to see if they made the right decision. Right. It just highlights this, the, how bad this rookie class is. They're just not ready. Yeah. More so yeah. than ever. And maybe it had something to do with their strange last year of college, but Jesus, I mean, opting out Trey Lance hadn't played football in a while. It shouldn't really be surprising. Meanwhile, Mac Jones was winning national. Well, championships. Well, and if you're, and if you're a 49ers fan, what would you rather have right now? Would you rather have <laughs> Mac Jones? And and your first round picks, and you could have traded Jimmy G to the Patriots right. and got something back from them. Like imagine having all those picks and Mac Jones versus wow. no Mac Jones, <laughs> Trey Lance on the bench, and no first round picks. But oh, Ka- it sounds Ka- so bad when you but put Shannon it. But Shannon's the genius. I don't know. Sh- I'm, John Lynch is also a genius. I mean, he was a welcome Matt for 15 years. Exactly. In the all right. So I think. I was just going to say real quick too. I think on on the whole quarterback situation too, though, I think the biggest issue, which which too, when we're seeing all these backup quarterbacks come in and actually playing well, and we're all questioning, like, is Mike white actually good? Do they, do they need Zach Wilson? I think it's because, and it's kind of a simple concept, right? But they're coming in with all this hype surrounding them. We were expecting Trevor Lawrence to be the Trevor Lawrence that we saw in college. We were expecting all these things out of quarterback quarterbacks where with Mac Jones, it's like, Oh, well he dropped to 15. So he must not be that good. And now he's overperforming because it was almost like, all right, people aren't really expecting me to come in here and kill it where the rest of the quarterbacks we were. So once they do poorly, it's like, they're feeling all of this pressure. And so I think that's kind of the pattern we're seeing with Mac Jones and also with a lot of these backup quarterbacks, which, I mean, it makes the slate ugly, but it is fun to see, you know, a, a little change in competition. It's not just like, all right, the bucks chiefs and you know, Rams are, are the best right now. It's like, oh shit! I she, actually don't know who's gonna win this she week. She sounds like Colby. She likes that. She likes dirty football. Get the I, backups I like in there. You get some parity going. All right. So right? now you you just moved to Vegas. First football season. Living out in Vegas. What are some uh, What are some highs and lows as far as like gambling, hanging out in Vegas for the NFL season? Yeah, man, it's been so fun. I probably one of the more boring football fans slash workers. Cause all I do is really sit in my apartment and watch the games. Um, but that's because, you know, it's an all day affair and it's not like I can leave to go. So if I'm sitting down watching for college, you know, it starts at 9am or even earlier the Hawaii games, whatever you want to call it. So it's an all day affair. I'll usually watch it here this last weekend. I finally went to stadium swim. You guys have been to Vegas yeah. a few yep. times. Okay. Yeah. We've done uh, we've done a couple live shows from stadium swim. It's yes. a pretty awesome hang. Uh, Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So it was my first time there. Um, and I met Derek Stevens, the owner of Circa and everything. And he's like, it's your first time here. I was like, yeah, I guess I don't get out much, but I'll come <laughs> back more. I promise. Uh, but it was really cool. And I actually put in, I would say like the highlight of my gambling so far is I've been doing pretty well. So I've like upped my unit size and that leads to to my bad part of betting right now this past <laughs> weekend. But let's talk about the good part first. Yeah. Um, so I go to Circa, I like throw together a last minute college parlay. This past weekend I had Mississippi, Mississippi State with the points against Arkansas. So I was like, yeah, I'll put that in. I'll add Notre Dame as a leg and Oklahoma State. Mm. I wasn't really expecting it to hit. I just like threw a little money on it. It was plus 600. And I'm like watching, obviously I'm watching the games. I have Derek put up Mississippi state cause he didn't have it up on the TV. And I was like, <laughs> 
oh shit. And then all my legs started hitting and I was like, wait a second. I was like, this is great. <laughs> and weirdly, I feel like those are my best gambling moments because like I'll have all of my picks for the show and for NFL during the week for other podcasts. And like, I'll really dig into those, but it's almost even better when you're like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to put 50 bucks on here, 20 bucks on here. And you end up winning like 2000. It's just, it's yeah. more fun. I'll say. Um, but I feel like that's been the most Vegas thing for me. It's a real like, winning these last minute college parlays. It's an awesomely D gen answer. First, you told us you didn't like to be bothered during football, which I get that. Like sometimes it's a hassle to go to a game because you can't just chill. Right. Yeah. And let's say you had a wall of TVs in your office with eight TVs that you called God, God's eye. You wouldn't want to leave that. And and then you said, uh, casually, I threw together a parlay. Like you would throw together an outfit. But look, th- Sean, I, when we met, first met Claudia, I feel like a proud, like I'm watching my daughter uh, go to middle school or something. Like th- there is some serious pride. Yes. Pro- the unit size is going up because we're confident in our best dabbling I, with the parlay. This is beautiful. And then the Rams screw me over. Uh, so like, I don't know. I might bring it back down but and, well, you, it, and you got crushed with a classic public <laughs> all in night spot. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, yeah. it was a f- the, the past few le- weeks leading up to this week. It was Oh my God. These are the worst weeks ever for sports books. They're going out of business. And then just, oh. you know, from, you know, being a seasoned vet, you just know they're, they're, it's the coming. turn is coming it's, and it came in a big way. Flows. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that and was I, brutal this I, past I thought the Bears were going to be a part of that turn, but uh, man, that that <laughs> game was brutal. Uh, I had Bears plus seven, but if you had Bears money line, you got to be so pissed speaking about the of, right? Speaking of underprepared quarterbacks, yeah. Uh, oh the God. you know last week, uh, besides kind of like shaking up the playoff, uh, you know the playoff seating, how that's looking, also was kind of a crazy impact on the MVP market. I mean, yeah. right now you could make a case for like, I feel like 10 guys for MVP, which is crazy considering we're this far into the season. Who do you, uh, who, who do you like right now? I, I got the odds pulled up over uh, from the win, of course. And who do you like as far as a potential MVP bet right now? Yeah. So I, I got Allen, I got Josh Allen before the season started. So I have that plus 800 ticket I'm holding on to. Hopefully what we saw uh, this past week is not going to happen again. I don't really think it will be. Um, I think it's really between Brady Allen and Lamar. And I know you mentioned you have the odds up. So it's Brady Allen, Stafford, Jack Rogers, Lamar. I get, I get so confused. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I have a feeling like if Lamar Jackson wasn't on the Ravens, they wouldn't be the threat that they are, right? Like you take him away. Yeah. They're not really a threat. They rank first in rushing yards a game. They wouldn't if they didn't have Lamar Jackson. 600 rushing puts him six in the entire league. Like he's a quarterback that's ahead of Dalvin Cook, that's ahead of Alvin Kamara, ahead of yeah, Aaron Jones. It's crazy. He has more rushing than his combined running backs. When it comes down to it, and it's like subjective, I guess you could say, because all right, most valuable, you know, oh, it's an individual award. Yeah, but whoever is voting is going to take like how the team's doing into account. So that's why everyone looks to Brady and Brady. It's hard to say, and he's my ex quarterback, so I always get a little butt talking about him. But like, he should and probably will win. He's my and ex, so I don't want to see though. Right? He, he, <laughs> like, he, I don't want to see him succeed. But no. You know what? I, but, 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 but he has the Super Bowl to win an MVP in. And you know, obviously, I'm in the same side as you. And I brought another stat that's interesting. Drew Brees holds the NFL record with. 5,404 yards of total offense in a season. Only seven QBs have ever topped 5,000. Lamar Jackson is mm-hmm. on pace for 5,718. Uh, He's nine to one. Like, what are we? They well, have and, the record, and, and I think Claudia right. had had a good point. And I, I feel like even in the office, we were talking about it, Kramer, and you had a similar angle. Especially if you if you define the MVP as truly most valuable, like you take Lamar off that team, and they are. They are horrible. I mean, I, I don't even know right. who the backup is in but there. Between Lamar at nine to one and Aaron Rodgers at nine to one, we just Aaron Rodgers' case just got laid out last <laughs> week when Jordan yeah. Love played a full game. So yeah, it, that it, that it, certainly <laughs> helps him. I I think I think the media is not going to vote for uh, Aaron Rodgers. They seem pretty pissed off at him. But getting back to yeah. Brady, like Brady, this past week it was probably the best for Brady's MVP case. <laughs> All these, you know, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray didn't play. Matt Stafford lost. Dak Prescott Scott lost like yeah. all these big name uh, quarterbacks lost and Brady was just sitting on his couch and, and kind of looks better. It'll be interesting to see how he 
And, and with MVP too, there is there's the narrative angle, and Tom Brady being the old guy getting it again. Lamar, I think the fact that he's already gotten it once. And if he gets it again, like his numbers aren't going to be quite as good. I think that's a little tough. But it's funny yeah. when when Claudia was mentioning that uh, Brady is like my quarterback X. <laughs> I feel like for Patriots fans, it's like X that you had kids with, so you don't want to bash him because <laughs> you know they're yes. still the father. I don't want to say mean things in front of you. Got a couple issues, but I'll save that for behind closed when, doors. When he comes to town, yeah. you're going to dinner with him. You know, yeah, you're checking out the yeah, game. It's, it's <laughs> civil. You gotta play nice, right? Exactly. You wish well, the best. I, I have to say, I think I told, I don't know if I told you guys this last time I was on the show, but for the Super Bowl last year, I mean, that wound was fresh, man. Mm. So I was fading the box. I was like, no, nah, they're not going to do it. Like, I want to be able to celebrate. I'm a dumbass because I was in Tampa. I'm like, why would I do this? I'm surrounded by Tampa fans and I'm like watching my old quarterback. I should not be salty about this. And of course, I was just like, brutally beat in that game. So since then I was like, took the bucks to win the super bowl this year, <laughs> like sprinkling Getting a little ahead on every bucks yes. game now. Here's I mean, a- it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, no. I, I mean, I'm with you. The emotional hedge of uh I, I almost played a Carson Wentz like Sean, comeback player of the year. Yeah, Sean has an ex quarterback as well, <laughs> yeah. Carson Wentz. But I, it's a different relationship. <laughs> it's a, it's one that was toxic. They wanted out. I want nothing to do with them. They cheated. Yeah. I keyed his car. No. And it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. Yeah. But no, I mean it is. It is insane to see Brady doing so well, throwing more touchdown passes in his forties than he did in his twenties, just looking happier overall. Like every time I see him out doing the little show he does with Gronk or just like pictures you see of him in Tampa, he just looks so much more comfortable and more happy, which destroys me. Um, But I think he definitely (laughs) is. He's on the path of winning this thing. And I don't see how he wouldn't, the bucks will likely finish with, you know, the number one seed in the NFC and even more too, you have to look at schedule because they have the fourth easiest remaining schedule. So we just talked about this past week and, and what it, you know, did to Allen and what it did to some of the other quarterbacks in the running right now, Brady's healthy right now. They have one of the easiest schedules remaining right now. He has pretty much all of his pieces around him. The secondary got better. So I would be shocked if he didn't win this, but again, I have the Allen ticket hoping maybe he can improve his numbers a little bit. Cause it's not like with Josh Allen, like his, his numbers aren't really MVP stats. He ranks 15th in passer rating eight in passing yards, 12th in touchdown rate. But cause you look at the box, like that's a very talented team. We haven't really seen it without Brady, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a it's case. Like- I'll give you a case where maybe they can lose a couple. The Redskins, the, the football team slash the Redskins gave him a tough game last ah. playoffs. The Giants gave him a tough game <laughs> last year and historically have played Brady tough. Colts on the I mean, look, the, they have to play the Saints one more time. He, he doesn't do well yeah, against he the doesn't Saints. Play well against Saints I, yeah. I would fade it just because the voters know that Brady will have his chance. Yeah, and and, and maybe there that's to it because it He's is He's got enough. It's it's, it's very, the LeBron factor. It, it's very much a narrative. And I'm gonna pull out uh this price. <laughs> This is uh, again. This is for the Dgens only. A hundred to one, <laughs> and I'll make a case for him. Ryan Tannehill right now. Win bet one hundred to one. First off, they have Jameis Winston at seventy five to one, which uh, I would not recommend betting that. So already no. already better value than some of those other prices. But Ryan Tannehill right now, hundred to one. And you you brought up Josh Allen not quite having the stats, and certainly that's the case for Ryan Tannehill. Like his his passing numbers haven't been flashy. However. They just beat the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Rams, and yeah. they're the number one seed in the AFC. If he can hold on to the number one seed in the AFC without Derrick Henry, the whole narrative is, oh, Derrick Henry's the entire team. He's the entire offense. They can't do it with that. If he can keep winning without Derrick Henry and the, the Titans end up getting the number one seed, him to win MVP 100 to 1 well, is, is. is Come he, on, he could end point, up. With, yeah, he could end up with. I mean, let's just say he has a couple two touchdown rushing games. Yes. he could end up with a decent amount of rushing touchdowns that could like give him that edge he needs to get yeah. over the top. So, Claudia, I'm going to wire you some money. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> mind putting <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Team Ryan for yes. the win here. I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, Kramer or Claudia, do you guys have any like crazy or? I mean, hundred to one. I'm not even going to say it's crazy, but uh, any other sort no, of longer shot. Everyone ones? else on this list is a burn your money candidate. Maybe Russ yeah, Wilson at seventy five to Russ, one. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes at seventy five to one. It uh, feels like he's he's like already halfway in the dirt. So maybe that's not possible. 
I'm staying away from Mahomes. Yeah. Um, I mean, between Mahomes and Jameis Winston, both at seventy-five to one, slight I, edge to Mahomes. But I'll hot take it. I think I don't think we see Mahomes playing another Super. Like I, I'm not joking when I say we may have seen the best really? of Patrick Mahomes. See yeah. now that I is. Agree. I mean, that's hot. What is it? Did they figure out? They just the defenses have figured Claudia, him out. Claudia, two years from being. A year and a Is half that? ago, we had Jeff Blake, who a uh, former quarterback at East Carolina and the Cincinnati Bengals and a couple other teams. He now has like a quarterback clinic and he literally unsolicited. We asked him if there was anyone he would like to get his hands on to, to fi- fix in the NFL, help their mechanics. He yeah. said Dak and Patrick Mahomes <laughs> because they both have crappy mechanics <laughs> and clearly Dak's really? focused on him maybe, but yeah, I mean it, it something about like when, when you we see it with big Ben right now on a much longer scale, right? Like when you, when you rely on your physical mm-hmm. abilities and those phys- physical abilities go away because of your off season addictions and your age, it quickly looks bad. And maybe yeah. with Mahomes, like that dance shit, like when he throws these bombs now and they're off by 10 yards to Tariq Hill, it's like, wh- the only difference is he was hitting them before. Yeah. And, yes, and now yeah. it just looks horrible. So yeah. Anyway. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you want more consistency than you want it's almost like he stood out because he was making these crazy passes, but it's like, I'd rather just have not an average quarterback, but a quarterback that like even Mac Jones, he's, he's pretty accurate. He's not making these incredible throws, but it's not like I'm holding my breath every time he throws like I do with Jameis Winston or I do with some of these other <laughs> quarterbacks. Right. And even now Patrick Mahomes, like, that, that that's so crazy. Say. I never thought I would say yeah. that before, but when he throws the ball, I'm kind of like, Oh crap. Like where is this going? Does well, he yeah. actually, it's almost just like he lost all of his confidence too. That's why I just don't. Yeah. I mean, I would not put my money on him for MVP, but, and and you mentioned confidence, even just as a gambler, as a guy who watches a ton of games, there's that feeling and much like when the, when the craps dice are in the air, when that football is in the air, you have a reaction as to, in that one second between where it gets to the receiver or doesn't, you have a feeling that goes through your body of like, this is going to work or this isn't going to work. And with Mahomes, yeah. it always used to be like, oh, I'd see how crazy and high and deep that ball is. The guy must be wide open. It's going to hit in stride. And now you're like, you have no, you don't have that feeling at all. Worth pointing out, he was 13 and 19 in college as a starting quarterback. Yeah. Ben Simmons wasn't a winner either in college. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't, you can't, you can't compare Patrick Mahomes and Ben Simmons. Sorry, like too hot. Ben Simmons. Don't get me started on him. I thought that was pretty hot. <laughs> we got to get an oven mitt. Uh, that's going to, you're going to be seriously burned. All right, Claudia. Uh, you know, we gotta it's being the sports gambling podcast, gotta give out some picks. Uh NFL week ten coming up. And of course we have the segment the lock dog and tease. Happy <laughs> So can I get you to give us a lock, uh, a money line dog, and then a three team six point tease you like from the win? Yes. After just going over, it's not like I was trashing uh, Josh Allen, but I was saying that he's not playing exactly how we were expecting him to this last week, I think was a, an anomaly. And it's also something that's going to push him to be better this week. So I'm going to take the bills as my lock, even though they are laying a lot of points right now, but they're playing the jets, right? So my thing with the jets is that I just went to the Bengals jets game. They sent me on the road. Oh, I nice. was there. I had the Bengals in a parlay. They were my lock of that parlay. <laughs> oh, so no. I'm sitting there surround. I'm sitting there surrounded by jets fans. And the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, all right, all right. Mike white gets hurt. Like this new guy comes in, Josh Johnson. I don't even know who he is. We should be fine. And then I'm watching and I'm like, Okay. They have a lot of time to throw the ball. Oh, okay. They're actually making, they're actually making the throws. Okay. The Bengals look terrible. Are the jets good? <laughs> so I literally leave MetLife and I'm like, um, are the Bengals really bad or are the jets actually good? I think the jets have played some pretty tough competition. I'm not going to say like they're a terrible team. They do have glimpses of goodness, but the bills need to win this game Yeah. after whatever that was last week, even laying 13 points, which I don't love to do on the road. Um, but I think they need this win. Josh Allen has, has all the pieces. He knows he needs this win, especially if he's is going to be in the running for MVP. Um, and I think the jets have just had some luck. The bills also have a good defense, right? So it's like when their offense isn't clicking, the defense did all they could this last week. It just didn't really come to fruition because the offense did nothing. Right. So the defense held their own against a pretty weak passing game. Um, I have a feeling they're just going to do the same. So I'm going to go with the bills. Hopefully they don't let me down. Yeah, um, Bills. But you guys actually, 
Bills laying 13 right now against the Jets. And yeah, it's a massive bounce back spot after teams losing to the Jags. Teams on the second of a back to back road spot. Oh, we've been 20, all over that. 21 trend. and 10 against the spread. So that helps you too, Claudia. B- Bills on the second one here. Bills laying 13. And and what about a money line dog? Who, what and there were so many upsets <laughs> last week. Uh who do you like this week as an as a possible upset? I'm gonna go with the one game when I looked at the slate that I thought could be a pick them and that's the Vikings Chargers. So Vikings at plus 120 right now. This is going to be a close game. You have two top 10 offenses, both rank as top teams in terms of games decided by seven or fewer points. So it's going to be close. Um, the Vikings have covered every spread this year when two and a half point dogs or more. They have a plus three point differential. Seven of their eight games have come down to the last play. Essentially, we know they just can't finish it, really. That, that's been <laughs> yes. their problem. So I think this is their time to take advantage of the other team's glaring weakness and to get ahead early and finish strong. That but glaring yeah, weakness, and, and the Chargers run defense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? yeah, huge Dalvin Cook game and uh super yeah. strange because I, I don't think their coach has a problem finishing. So <laughs> yes. I, it's strange they don't embody that spirit. Um yeah, yeah unfortunate. Vikings, yeah. It, I mean, the other thing too is like the Chargers, they're one of those teams that are just not good at home. Well, and uh, yeah, and the spreadsheet Vikings nerds the love the Vikings because, as Claudia pointed out, that point differential does not very re- not they, representative they of their be, record. They should be a little bit better. They blew that game in uh, Baltimore, <laughs> but again, Ryan, uh, even coming back to the back-to-back uh, road yeah. game trend, I, I, does it make sense to me why teams are good on that second back-to-back? But uh, maybe it's just like they they're pricing it uh, too much different from the back-to-back. But uh, yeah, what what about a well, tease? What do you like there? Yeah, you guys actually, I think this might be one of my plays this week because it's funny because when someone will ask me to come out with a play, I'll do the research. And then if I actually convince myself of it, I'm like, all right, hell yeah, now I can do this on (laughs) my show. Uh, So I'm actually going to throw the Vikings in there. So Vikings plus eight and a half against Chargers, Baltimore minus one and a half, Dolphins, and then Saints with nine against the Titans, which the Vikings, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, The Baltimore game. I'm probably most confident on oh, and yeah. Saints Titans scare me. I told myself I would stop betting on the Saints, but with nine points, I, no. I'm hoping the Titans aren't as good as they as they looked without be, Henry. Be careful teasing against two on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> Clock, you're crossing all the key numbers. No, that Stanford Wong would be proud. Yes, exactly. The, the great uh, Wong teaser method. All right, so you like the uh, you like the Bills laying 13, Vikings as the money line dog plus 120. And the three team tees, and you're on the Ravens down to one and a half, like that. T- Saints up to nine, and then the last one, Vikings as well, up to eight and a half. I love that, that Vikings that feels, leg. That Vikings tees in particular feels really juicy because I and I I wouldn't be surprised if like the two and a half comes into play. They they are just good at losing close games, <laughs> but hopefully yeah. uh, hopefully you get the money line a dog there as well. All right, appreciate you calling in, Claudia. As always. Make sure you follow Claudia on Twitter at C Bellafato TV and uh, subscribe to her podcast with Joe Fan. She co hosts it, Bet to Win, on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. Claudia, appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one. Oh, yeah. New sponsor. Loving this. Uh, BetterFantasy.com. It's a new uh, free to play app that lets you sync your fantasy football league. And you can then bet on the matchups. You can even cash out uh, for some sweet gift cards. Again, they're a brand new company looking for some early adopters. They got the app going on the iPhone and the Android. But again, just adds another level of hashtag DGENs only to your fantasy football Sunday. Check them out today. Just go to betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. That's V E T T O R fantasy.com slash S G P N to get started today. Kramer, we got to do some uh, head to head battling. Uh, yeah. I'm excited. What yeah. do we let's do that this weekend. Yes. All right. Let's put it on the to do's for the Thursday morning. We will be we'll be battling it out in better fantasy. And we, we got to, uh, we got to figure out a way to uh, challenge the uh, listeners slash viewers. We'll save that for the NFL picks podcast tomorrow. Get that going. All right, let's talk DFS week 10. What do you got? Who is your quarterback? I gave out Lamar Jackson. 
They got you a little right. lucky after that, but I, I had a couple a couple winners. I feel like I'm getting four, five. You were on the right page. six, maybe as high as a kind of hot leads in the Millie Maker. Haven't put it all together yet, but I'm feeling good about this weekend. Uh, all right. So do you want to go first? You want me to? You can go first, right? All right. I, you know, there's plenty of ways to to play this week. Um, I certainly think it's okay if you want to play, uh, you know, Tom Brady, someone like that. I, I definitely He's have fun. A, I have a Brady lineup, but you know what I'm doing, Sean? I'm going Ben Roethlisberger. Oh, really? Oh my God. Uh, hear me out. <laughs> it's easy to, for me to come here with a Matt Ryan or a Tom Brady. Yeah. Maybe even a Dakota Rain Prescott. I wouldn't do that it. But is a disgusting act. Here's the case. One, this is a GPP lineup. Yeah, we want to be a little different. I have Win some tourneys. I think there's going to be some some very popular quarterbacks this this week because there aren't a lot of good options. Do you agree with that? Hmm. So step one, let's do that. Step two, Ben Roethlisberger, an offense that for whatever reason insists on wanting to throw the ball, coming off a game against a really good Chicago Bears defense. Now they have one of the worst defenses in the league, the Detroit Lions, uh, on deck. You look at Big Ben, it's crazy, but even last game he had 30 attempts. He has multiple games with 40 plus attempts this year. <laughs> he has three games with 40 attempts. Well, how, how much is he? He's 5600. Wow. Hold on, let me make sure that it's not 5800. He's 5600. So, I think it sets up nicely for uh stacks. You know I like to work the tight end into the stack or the bring back, so there's a nice work in there. And and I think it also gives me an opportunity to play a, a contrarian bring back with a high fly. Anyway, you'll hear the lineup, but it fit together. And I'm playing Big Ben. <laughs> He's good looking. Uh, still, maybe maybe not quite the arm, but could he get three four touchdowns against the Lions? Absolutely, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, I guess your concern is it's just a Najee game, but. Uh, they do seem to be throwing the ball with Ben. I don't know how he got those two touchdowns in that Bears game. I had the under one and a half, and I should have I should have hedged with Fryer because they throw the ball touchdowns. so much. Like that wh is true. Why didn't Najee Harris have more carries? Yeah, he was running good. A, it's hard to run against the Bears, but also they just don't run the ball. They just I, I mean they don't stick to it. Yeah, but I I think I mean you look at what the Eagles did to the Detroit Lions last game before the Lions had the bye. Four rushing touchdowns. So I it's just not in their DNA though. Like I agree with you. But do you would would you what do you bet first? That Big Ben throws the ball forty times or Najee Harris has thirty carries? Najee Harris has thirty carries. Oh. In this game. I would take that bet. Okay. We'll take that. Some sim units, maybe. Ryan Tannehill. I'm all I'm all in on Tannehill. Sixty two hundred dollars at home. Team Ryan. Against this New Orleans team. I, I know everyone's it's a bounce back game for New Orleans. Everyone's going to be betting New Orleans. Yep. Ted Titans are only two and a half point favorites. What are the let down spot? What do the Titans have to do? I mean, they said it was a letdown spot when they played Kansas City. <laughs> they said it was a letdown spot when they played the Rams. They beat Buffalo, yeah. uh, KC, and the Rams. And and again, why I kind of because the nerds and the spreadsheet and the data. <laughs> Says they're not a good team because um, Mike Vrabel can't possibly be smart. I mean, look, say what you will about Mike Vrabel, but he has this young like kid that looks like he is a Madden player who just stands next to him. You ever seen him on the sideline? Tells him what to do. Ever look at Mike Vrabel during a timeout or or a, 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 like an end the, the the clock situation? He, look, they're doing something down there. I, it doesn't make sense to me either. But Tannehill and and you've highlighted it many times. But that rushing touchdown yes. floor, especially now with the big dog out, he already now he got he got a uh, rushing touchdown last game. I'm hoping for another one this game. But really, I what I'm what I'm uh, rooting for, or hoping for, or kind of positioning myself around here is it's going to be Trevor Simeon or even uh, maybe Taysom Hill on the road. Outdoors, we've seen these dome teams as they go outside. Trevor Simeon had a couple drives towards the end where he looked okay, but I I think against this Tennessee defense that we saw fly around, yep. turn over uh, the New Orleans or sorry, turn over the Los Angeles Rams, a much better offense. I think they get some turnovers, they get some easy touchdowns for Ryan Tano. It does seem like at some point someone's gonna light up the Titans. It just doesn't. It's not gonna be the Saints team. Right? Yeah, and, and again, he's he's. It's very like a fishing clean game he's playing, 
but I, I think there's a breakout uh, chance for him, especially again, that he could be involved rushing the ball near the goal line and that they maybe are going to end up throwing the ball a little bit more. It's also like, he's also checks the box on having like an obvious stack receiver. So yeah. like that always makes it easier. All right. My uh, I'll start. My bring back is swift. Uh, he, he has so step one, Sean, he's got a red thing next to his name. Always like playing a guy like that. He's still 6,800, but Holy crap. If the Steelers do get up and they do decide they're going to pass a little bit, Jared Goff's going to have to check down with that pass rush. Yeah, uh, this is this is a Swift greater than ten target, maybe greater than ten catch game. So bring it back with Swift for sixty eight hundred. This is a pretty cheap double stack comeback. You'll, you'll hear, but he's the most expensive guy. So yeah. Let's get it. DeAndre Swift. Yeah, no, I mean him getting involved. Boy, we were wrong about Jamal Williams and Swift. No, I mean yeah. jo- No, we were wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh I mean I I think Jamal Williams if he stays healthy and DeAndre Swift the the injury news that we were hearing about if that ended up being more severe, I think that would have been a, a crazy You mean the murder the murder case off. Yeah, the there was there was also he might have murdered someone. Might so have I been think there murder. was I, I think where we were drafting him was really crazy. I mean, it's not murder. like we were taking DeAndre Swift in the first round, not like Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, all these other like first round busts. Yeah, still wrong. Jordan Howard, forty nine hundred dollars. <laughs> Jordan I, Howard's alive. He is. He's alive and well. Seventeen carries, seventy one yards, crazy. a touchdown. Like uh, Sirianni, to his credit, uh, Jonathan Gannon still on the shit list, but. Sirianni, I I like the offense he drew up, put together for Hertz. It was uh, run heavy, play action off the run, uh, design runs for Hertz. I I think he put him in a good spot. And Jordan Howard is a big part of it. Seventeen carries, seventy one yards, got a touchdown. That's crazy. He's getting all their goal line work. So uh, I think at forty nine hundred dollars, and you basically have a workhorse back against the Denver defense, which played really well against the Cowboys, but. I mean, you commented on it about how fired up Angio was. So fired up. I I don't know, man. It, this is a letdown spot. It, it feels like a letdown s- a spot for the Broncos. So, yeah, if the if the Eagles can bring some physicality and pound Jordan Howard, I wouldn't be surprised. He has a, another good game. Yeah, and, and and you know, and not to mention the Eagles seem to just, you know, they're at peace on the road for whatever reason. Yeah, much better on the road. I I can't explain it. All right, my second running back. I think a lot of people are going to play the other running back in this matchup, Singletary. Now that uh, Moss looks to be out with the concussion protocol, uh, but with Mike White looking to get his third straight start, uh, I know he didn't play most of the game last week. I'm going to go back to Michael Carter, 5600. You know, I think a lot of us expect the Bills to maybe get get a little healthy in this one. Uh, I and another area you'll hear a lot of people talk about how good the Bills are against the running back. Um, so I, I don't mind again, another guy with a red number next to him, like having that 5,600, give me Michael Carter. I think another high catch volume guy. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm going, uh, my bring back is on the new Orleans Saints side. I'm going running back, not going Alvin Kamara, massive pivot play here. Give me Mark Ingram, pretty cheap. $4,500 and five targets last week, five targets. Exactly. Five targets, five catches. Nine uh, carries for 43 yards, and he seemed really excited to be back a part of the Saints team. <laughs> he was running hard, not to be a part of the Texans team no. again. This Wouldn't is just you? another eye test guy. Yeah, and Jordan Howard and Mark Ingram, both kind of old vets that you wouldn't expect you'd be investing in, but mm, they just Sean. There's no cap pass catching upside <laughs> there. Mm. They're they're guys that are going to get a bunch of goal line looks, and they're guys that just look like they're running hard. I mean, there's there's really no other way to say it. They just look. It's like, crazy to me. Jordan Howard is like having games now. Yeah, and and looks good. Looks completely in shape. All right, quick uh, shout out PrizePicks.com. That's right. We've been talking DFS. Uh, I mean, this is the DFS episode over under, and obviously all the guys were thrown in here. We like the overs on, uh, and make sure to check out PrizePicks.com. They got you covered for all sports. NBA DFS is back better than ever. They even got you covered for college basketball DFS. Uh, you know, I mean, college football DFS, which I know a lot of places don't have. And uh, prize picks is just, uh, it's a lot of fun. We will give out our Thursday night prize picks uh, props on the uh, NFL picks podcast. But again, 
head over to prizefix.com, use our promo code SGP and get a hundred percent instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prizefix.com promo code SGP. Kramer, who's your first receiver? Uh, Sean, you failed to mention they also have soccer, hockey, cricket, and uh, video games. Oh, esports, yes. baby. Okay, gotta get my esports uh, props in. My uh, let's go to my uh, Big Ben first leg of the stack. The guy he like just likes throwing to Deontay Johnson. I yeah. Mean, period. He, PBR machine. Only sixty eight hundred. Uh, again, if if this Lions defense has uh, been leaky before, so. Uh, Deontay Johnson uh, thought about Claypool, maybe the touchdown upside there. I just I like how often Big Ben looks to Johnson. So sixty eight hundred Deontay Johnson. Yeah, I mean it, it's a great play, and he's again Deontay Johnson is still one of those guys that seems to catch a bunch of passes right near the line of scrimmage, which is about uh, you know as far as uh, Big Ben can <laughs> throw it. So it works out, right? Yeah, I, I think he's a guy you want to go to. I mean, I'm I'm definitely going to consider playing. Uh, now it's, this is assuming Aaron Rodgers uh, they get him off the ventilator. He's out of the hospital. Clears clears the COVID protocol. He is assuming he's going to be starting on uh, Sunday at home. Devonte Adams against his Seahawks mm. defense. Wow. This is a revenge game. Real escalate there. Not, uh, I mean, for everyone involved. I I think you know. I, I think Aaron Rodgers has a chip on his shoulder. Devonte Adams looked legitimately pissed at Jordan Love. Uh, last week in that Chiefs game, and he was just getting one-on-one coverage yeah. and just so so frustrated. And Seattle's defense, and we haven't seen it uh, past couple of weeks that they were you know they were on by, and then they were playing the Jags, but they haven't really been tested recently uh, with their uh, with their cornerbacks. And I think they really could against this uh, Green Bay offense. So seventy nine hundred Devonte Adams. Whew. I mean, Roger sounded sounds sick in those. He's got the sniffles at least. I wonder if he'll be a hundred percent. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't if there's anyone, it, he's gonna be taking all that. Uh, I don't know what what Russ, all the homeopathic medicine. Russ that guy's him. gonna be fired up. And Rogers definitely seems we uh, as we handicapped him during the season. Like there are games where he gets up, and there are games where he kind of phones it in. Yeah. This is a get up game for Rogers. Russ is coming to town. Russ might have sent him some of Sierra's uh, homemade concussion water to help him <laughs> out with the uh, recovery process. All right, give me my second receiver, seventy six hundred, paying up a little bit. Uh, Terry McLaurin. I, I just expect there to be a lot of passing in this game. Scary Terry, and he's been absolutely electric. Uh, another one of these Ohio State receivers. He he just looks good, and and I it doesn't really matter that Heineke is just kind of trash because Heineke's willing no, to give, well, him, McKissick, give him the target. McKissick is an interesting uh, play this week as well. I mean, he's back to kind of being that guy who just catches a ton and of the passes. Buck, the Bucks secondary is still like I don't know who's going to guard him, and so if he's just open and Heineke's willing to chuck him the ball, yeah, I like the matchup. No, that makes sense. Um, I got a mini game stack going for Seattle Green Bay, and I'm coming back with uh, DK Metcalf. Oh, who is just oh, oh. the guy is just real a beast. And again, Green Bay, uh, we didn't see it against uh, the Chiefs. weren't able to do it because the Chiefs' offense apparently sucks now. But mm -hmm. Green Bay has also had issues with their secondary, and and even when it was just Geno Smith, DK Metcalf was highly efficient. Uh, guy looked really good. I mean, you uh, you could talk me into into Lockett as well. But I, I just, it's hard to deny the physicality and the unguardability that DK Metcalf brings to the matchup. We got to figure, I got to play a lineup with Russ, Lockett, Metcalf, and uh, bringing it back with Devontae Adams oh, if that's yeah, possible. Yes. Crazy nugget here. Uh, Lockett, uh, responsible for 40, almost 42% of Seattle's air yards still, even with the last couple of weeks. Which well, is, no, and, and he's actually, the, it was weird. The first week with Geno Smith, he didn't do shit. And yeah. then after that, he, he really just racked up a ton of catches. All right, next up, uh, also a little mini game stack here with McLaurin, and that's Mike Evans, sixty nine hundred. Sounds like Brown and Gronk are out, which means it's going to be Godwin. It's going to be Evans, and uh, I don't think Brash Brashad Perryman saw. You, you saw that he cleared waivers. Another uh, former first round <laughs> wide receiver clearing waivers has been freed. Sounds like he's signing with the Bucks. I, I doubt he'll. Uh, get involved, but that that could be an interesting uh, yeah pump, pump play if if they're really that short on receivers. But yeah, Mike Evans to go with Terry McLaurin and that. I think you you got you got to be in that. That was the game to me. I like after I made the stack, I was like, I got to get into that game. AJ Brown is my stack <laughs> for Ryan Tannehill. Not doing the double stack, just a single stack. I mean, 
he he had a pretty inefficient game last week. Eleven targets, five catches. Uh, Ramsey, I think, was on him for most of the game, but um, and you know he's been dealing with a little knee injury. He's not on the injury report right now. I like him to have a bounce back game. I mean, maybe they stick Lattimore on him, but I I still think this guy can. He seemed to be uh, post diarrhea. He's been on another level. So give me AJ Brown, seventy eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean he, it, Julio, I guess is old. Maybe that's the, the the real story. And they've been trying to baby Julio. It's just they pay Josh Reynolds all that money. He's not even on the field it, for a team that's like God. They're st- and they're still good. It, it's still working out for him. All right, uh, where are we at? Tight end. We're at the tight end position. Yep. So when I first did this, I thought maybe I go Big Ben, Najee, uh, Deontay Johnson, and bring it back with Hawkinson. But I like it more with Fryermuth. He's only thirty nine hundred still. He's clearly now a part of that offense with Juju Ebron out. I don't. I don't even think it matters if Ebron comes back. Fryermuth no. has, has taken the taken the job, and you know, coming off a two just, touchdown just game, just salivating at my Ebron under receiving yards. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, god damn, what a <laughs> easy. Some of these bets we made pre easy money. So yeah, I'm, uh, the double stack. You know, I like to double stack with the tight end. Give me Fryer Muth for thirty nine hundred. I mean, uh, what did, what did he have last game, Sean? Uh, six targets, two of them touchdowns. I mean, that that's how you get paid off. That's, no, and, and that's how the double stack pays off. And yeah, that would be my only case against. It just happened. A Fryer Muth is that is he going to have back to back two touchdown games? Uh, I, uh, we'll see. I, I certainly think he's going to have a a good game. This guy, give me Dan Arnold uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We, I wouldn't be surprised in the same way that the Jets kind of put up a bunch of garbage yards against the Colts. Why can't the why wouldn't the Jags be able to do a similar thing? And we've seen oh. Arnold really uh, in garbage time against the Seahawks. He had eight catches for sixty eight yards and a touchdown. And even in non garbage time in that close game against the Bills, he still had four catches, sixty yards. That's ten points for a guy at only thirty five hundred. Not bad if you can get double digits out of a guy you're only paying thirty five hundred. I, I think I think like eight nine is his floor, and I think he has a ceiling. Like if he got two touchdowns, would you be you be shocked? I wouldn't, and especially if Indy they're at home, uh, they seem to like to beat up on bad teams. If, if Indy starts pulling away, and you know Jags just have to check it down, he's sitting there over the middle like. Him racking up a bunch of late PPR points is is something I could totally see coming. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and yeah, like last game would even be like the floor game, I guess, which ten points. Like yeah, in, in this new look, uh, Jags offense that they got going. All right, we got a flex spot. We got a defense left. Before we get to those, want to shout out BetQL Daily. You like listening to sports gambling podcasts, of course you do. That's why you're listening to the sports gambling podcast. And uh, you know, I also listen to a, a ton of sports betting podcasts. I think you guys will really enjoy BetQL Daily. Who do you got over there? You got Joe Giglio, uh, Aaron Hawksworth, and uh, they're doing wager entertainment. They're they're talking picks, talking gambling. You know, the s- similar vibe that we have going on. And uh, again, if you don't know uh, which way to head, why not check out a BetQL Daily. Uh, they got recaps from some of the biggest games and sports. Again, when you're betting games, you're getting down on action. You can never have too many opinions, too much information. That's why you should listen weekdays, 9 a.m. to noon on Odyssey, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. That's BetQL Daily. Kramer, who's in your flex spot? Uh, sorry, I was just checking some college basketball scores. Oh, you know, we get, when, when action happens, I, I told you earlier I wanted to cancel the podcast because I, <laughs> I'm too much college basketball. Too action. many games. Like I, I got 70, 70 just first half unders, not even the sides uh, in money lines. I'm sweating out right now. All right. My uh, my flex. Sean, I have a nugget for you. Sure. Uh, Jacoby Myers has the most targets without a touchdown in the history of the NFL. They've said they've been tracking that uh, stat since 1992. No player has ever had a 194 targets without a touchdown. <laughs> he's Mac Jones's guy. Yeah, and I think he's going to have some opportunities this week. Uh, as you mentioned, the back, the running backs are a bit of a mess. Although I'm interested in Bolden and just that game in general. I, I kind of, I, I don't really know how it's going to go. But when I look at the price, 4800, and I look at Myers, you know, 
we're fading his worst game of the year. Only four targets. Previous to that, nine, seven, six. So I like the price point. I think there could be some opportunities for him to get a couple catches here. And like I said, for some, I think New England's going to score some points in this one against Cleveland. Uh, I've not been super impressed with Cleveland's defense outside of that pass rush. So, forty eight hundred, Jacoby Myers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Cleveland responds after they destroyed the Bengals. I I could see them smelling themselves. Uh, definitely. Oh, the running rack room has COVID too. So yeah, that could that could really hurt. Michael Pittman Jr. for the Colts at home, sixty three hundred dollars. Have a little Jags Colts game stack here, and and Michael Pittman. I know because we traded for him in our big money fantasy league. He has been he has been red hot since he joined our uh, ETH league team, Ryan. Four catches for 105 and a touchdown against the 49ers. Ten catches, 86 yards for two touchdowns against the Titans, and even a pedestrian five for 64 and a touchdown against the Jets. Relatively, he's Carson Wentz's guy. I mean, uh, certainly they'll be running the ball as well. But Michael Pittman seems to be the the number one receiver by a long shot. And this is a great matchup against the Jags. I, I mean, Geno Smith lit him up. I, I, I think <laughs> I think Wentz has a good game. Josh Allen struggled. Uh, th- I have a nugget. That's very <laughs> true. I have a nugget for you. Seventy-one targets Michael Pittman has this year. How many drops? That's got to be low. Zero. He has not dropped a single pass. Oh you want to talk about a guy who loves Carson Wentz? It's Michael Pittman. He's playing hard. Yeah. And, and it was one of the angles, right? The contested catch. They guy. have a connection. And we, and in the same way Ertz was his guy in Philly, Michael Pittman is his guy in oh. Indy. Feels very comfortable throwing to him. They're at home against his Jags defense, which besides their holding to the, the Bills to six points have been pretty bad. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> that de- feels like an outlier. Decent, it, it may be an outlier. Uh all right. I uh, what I did as I snuck in my my usual Sean, you know I like the running back defense stack. Uh, went went a little unconventional with this one because I only had two thousand dollars. Took the Jets. Josh Allen's feeling oh dangerous. The, right, we're in lockstep. Also we, took the Jets. Could do. I mean, I know they just gave up forty five points to Carson <laughs> Wentz and the Colts coming off the long week. Jets have a Jets have a bit of a pass rush. I'll say at times. I Just know it's simply, to say, but Josh Allen is pressing. Like the case against it is like, oh, they're really going to lean on the maybe the running game and having him check down. He's just not that guy, and he's like gone past the point of like being that guy. And so, you know, much like Mahomes might just not be getting fixed this year, I certainly think Josh Allen is going to continue to turn the ball over. Yeah, and uh, it, this works two ways: either Jets are creating turnovers and they're in that game, or Buffalo. Uh, you know, volume, yeah, or or Buffalo is throwing a bunch, which they seem to do. Like if somehow the Jets get up and the bu- the Bills throw a bunch, I mean, Allen has the same thing with Mahomes, or he's he's holding on to the ball too long. You could see them get some sacks, and again, <laughs> it, it's to me, it's just crazy to pay up for defense. Um, you know, you could talk me into any one of these cheap defense. I also do like the Titans at home against the Saints. I mean, Trevor Simeon on the road, that defense is only twenty six hundred. Um, there's a number of like interesting cheap defenses that I think are pretty frisky uh, when you when you when you kind of look at these prices. But I'm with you. Lock up the Jets at 2,000. So lineup recap real quick: Tannehill, Jordan Howard, uh, Mark Ingram, the big dogs, and then big dog price wise for the receivers: Devontae Adams, AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, Dan Arnold, Pittman Jr. for the uh, mini game stack there, and then closing it out with the Jets Jets. So you, you no no you had a single stack then yes uh, get let you get a second uh, game stack in there though I like that yeah all right uh, Big Ben with DeAndre Swift Michael Carter uh, Terry McLaurin and Mike Evans for that little mini game stack and then the stack the double stack Deontay Johnson with Pat Fryermuth at tight end flex Jacoby Myers and his 194 targets without a touchdown and then the Jets defense stacked with Mr Michael Carter. Let's go, Jets defense. J E. We'll tell Colby about this and he'll be so angry. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Make sure you drop a nice rating and review on the old Apple Podcast for your chance to win free gear every Monday, aka Merch Monday. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the Muddy Green, and he is Ryan. Big Ben's going to do it this week, Sean. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs> <laughs>